Hello my friends and welcome. The news number one for today that Russia definitely lost the commander of their Black Sea fleet. The Ukrainian military command and intelligence officials already said about it. Totally Russia lost 34 of their military officers in the main command building of the Black Sea fleet. And more than 100 military officials of Russia were delivered to the hospitals. The name of the main commander of the Russian Black Sea was Viktor Sakhalov. Well, officially Russia haven't stated that they lost so many officers, including the main commander, but what they need to do is to show this guy alive to the TV cameras, so it will just ruin the Ukrainian propaganda, because the information is coming from the Ukrainian officials. If they show this guy, we shouldn't trust Ukraine officials, but something tells me that Russia is unable to show this guy to the public. I think that Ukrainian intelligence knows what they are speaking about. I don't even have the words to describe the humiliation of the Russian Navy. Ukraine doesn't have any kind of the ships that it uses against the Russian fleet, but still without many of the Russian ships together with the main Russian command. I think that it is the first time in history that someone performs that successful operations using the long-range missiles. So the last year the main ship was downed and this year the main commander of the Russian ships was also downed. According to some of the Crimean media resources, which are in opposition to the Russian side, the information about the particular time and place of the officers' meeting in that headquarters came from the Russian officers themselves. Again, we are out of the any confirmation of this information. But what happened is the fact that Russia is out of their main officers who were responsible for their ships in the Black Sea. For Ukraine, it is awesome. This job was done by just three of the cruise missiles. Remember, yesterday we were speaking about the Kursk airfield attack, so Russia also lost the officers over there. The commander of the 14th Aviation Regiment lost his life together with his deputy. Plus the ordinary aviation officers, someone from FSB and the airdrome staff. Yet no any satellite images were published about what was particularly targeted in that airfield. Based on the information which is coming from the Ukrainian officials, again, I guess that the main office building, we may call it like that, was targeted by the long-range missiles or some CERN drones. By the way, the last night Russia responded by attacking the Odessa Hotel, which is located in Odessa. It is one of the well-known buildings in Odessa, and it wasn't really in use. I was there one year ago in November 2022, was very close to it. This building was abandoned this time and many years before. There were some of the issues with the owners of the building, so mainly it was used as the big monument. So it was targeted yesterday, there was the huge fire, and I would say that probably this building is useless to restore its better to demolish it and build something new. One of the drones targeted this building causing the severe fire, so it was ruined not by the drone but by the fire. The hotel is located just in the sea. But what Russia says that there was the Ukrainian military command office in that building, so they revenged for the Sevastopol attack that was conducted by Ukraine cruise missiles. Actually, my friends, it is nonsense to base the military units or any kind of the officers in that building, because we understand that it's just the final border of Odessa. Further, there's just the Black Sea where there are many Russian ships, so it's just nonsense to base something over there. This is how Russia targeted the Odessa city yesterday, so they used the cruise missiles, they used the Shahid drones and also Onyx supersonic missiles, which have just a straight vector. The Shahid drones are shown in yellow, and those are the caliber cruise missiles. You may see the trajectory is very interesting. The missiles went to Kirovograd Oblast and returned back to Odessa. The United States of America may supply Atakams cluster missiles to Ukraine this week. At least they may announce the supplement. Hopefully, finally, we're gonna receive those missiles till the new year. As you see, this information is quite open right now. Media resources are discussing it. Unfortunately, the cluster munition warheads will not allow Ukraine to cut the main Russian supply to Crimea. I mean the Kerch 
I mean the Kerch Bridge. Plus, we'll have not a big number of those missiles in Ukrainian army, so I do not expect that it will be really a game changer in this war, unfortunately. But it's the good start, and we should receive even more attack amps the next year, and there we may talk. Today, Ukraine again launched the massive attack on Crimean Russian military bases in Jankoy, in Gvardiyska, in Bakhchisarai, Sevastopol. However, for this time, we don't have many of the video confirmations of what exactly was targeted. As usual, locals reported about the explosions. Russia says that they've shut down everything, including the Storm Shadow cruise missiles. Yes, Russia still has quite serious air defense, and probably they sent more for security. But I bet that they are unable to shut down everything, especially if we speak about the cruise missiles. Also, we have the confirmation that the first Abrams tanks were delivered to Ukraine from Germany. Well, I know, actually from the United States of America, but firstly, they were delivered to Germany, where our soldiers went through the training how to use those tanks, and now they were delivered to Ukraine from Germany. Hopefully, logistics will work fine to maintain those tanks. Why do I like the Abrams tanks? Because they are proven by many of the military conflicts in Iraq, in Afghanistan, that they are very robust, they are very powerful, and they may save the lives for our soldiers. Awesome machines. Ukraine sends more of the commercial ships across the Black Sea from Odessa ports to deliver the grains to the third countries without Russia. Why is it now possible to deliver the grains? Because the special services and the special forces of Ukraine were able to liberate the gas and oil platforms in the Black Sea. Now they are used as the bridgeheads for our soldiers to control the perimeter. Plus, the Russian Navy in the Black Sea suffers a lot, and it's risky for those ships to make missions far away from Crimean Peninsula. According to the leaked information, Shoigu got the order from Putin to stop the Ukrainian counteroffensive till October. So, how many days left? Five? Well, Shoigu doesn't have the superpowers to stop the Ukrainian counteroffensive. The main problem here lies within the Russian army system itself. They are in lack of the supplies, and they're basically stuck in 80s. All of their mindset of their commanders is Soviet. Russia uses the tank decoys, so those are not the real tanks, they're just the big balloons in the size, form and the color of the tank. You may see it over here, clearly, those are like mattresses or something. This armor, the contact one, is not the real one. This is also looks like some sort of the pillow, so definitely it's not the real tank. Luckily, our guys knew about it, so they do not use the ammunition to destroy the Russian fake tanks. And they use quite a lot of those. This is probably T-55 or something like that, and before we saw T-72. This is the Bakhmut city. You may see that Russia started to use some sort of the volleyball net to protect their vehicles against the FPV drone attacks, which they put on the light pillars just across the street. Interesting tactics. Let's go to the military map update. We have just a single one for today. Ukrainian army went to Verbova village. You may see that in the recent 24 hours, Ukrainian soldiers went into this village. But still, it might take a lot of the time to liberate this village, because Russia uses it as the part of the defense lines. This video I was able to find on the pro-Russian channel. The Russian military police stops and finds the Russian soldiers, because they are not fasting their belts in their military vehicles. This is happening not far away from the front lines. The Russian soldiers who are filming this video on the phone are really upset about the case. They say, we are fighting for you and you stop us. And the guy says, yes, sir, the rules are the rules, you should fasten your seatbelt and then go to meet your FPV drone. There are tons of the hate comments under this video, mostly from the Russian soldiers. They say also that the situation on the south is critical for them, and Russia doesn't do anything for their supplies, but restricts the Russian soldiers. There were even the cases that the Russian military command stops the humanitarian supplies for the Russian soldiers 
or the volunteer help the drones, the vehicles that Russians collect for their army. Instead, they put the military police to find their soldiers for not fasting the seat belts in the military vehicle not far away from the front line. So Russia wants this army to win, really. About Kadyrov, he's alive and seems to be in a good mood. Today his 15 years old son beating up one of the Russian who hated Koran and does something terrible with that. He did it on the Russian territory but was delivered to Chechnya for execution, let's say. So one of the Russian journalists spoke with Kadyrov about the case. Kadyrov seems to be proud about the actions of his 15 years old son. The video about the actual case I'll publish on my Telegram channel. By the way, my friends, please subscribe for my Telegram. I use it to update you regularly. Some of the Russian tourists on the way to the North Pole decided to ride the rubber boat in the cold waters of the ocean, but the king of the local waters appeared. His name was Volerus. So let's see what happened to the Russian rubber boat. The Volerus attacked the boat with its tusks and finally penetrated the skin causing the dramatic damage to the boat Russians were really disappointed that they were met like that by the animal the walrus was quite satisfied that he secured his waters from being Russianed yeah it was just a fun stuff to watch I understand that not all of the Russians want to occupy Ukraine. Here we have the case of the good Russian, who was told by the Russian military to go and serve for the Russian army, to go to Ukraine to execute the Russian war crimes and to lose his life. This guy has the wife and a very little daughter, she is five months old. So here he goes, he packed all of the belongings, but he is not going to Ukraine. He is going to prison for two years because he didn't want to go to Ukraine and kill us. So he will spend two years, but he will save his life with it and also lives of those people whom he might have eliminated with his weaponry. He doesn't want to take the weaponry. He doesn't want to go to the army. So then someone tells me that those are poor Russians on the front lines, they are losing their lives. No, they are not poor, they always have the choice. In Russia, basically, you still have the chance, the chance to secure your life. It's not a normal prison, I would say, it's like the colony, where people may still live it for some certain days, and family also may meet together in this prison. Usually it is located in some sort of the remote small town. I would say that the conditions in that prison are way better than in the Russian barracks, not even speaking about the trenches on the front lines where you are under the risk of losing your life. So definitely this guy did it right. He's, I think, a good Russian. In a couple of years he will meet his daughter, his wife, and they will live the normal life as before as normal as it could be in the Russian Federation. My friends, don't forget to press the like to this video and also you may support my channel by checking the links in the video description just below. Special thanks for my Patreon supporters and the sponsors of my YouTube channel. Thank you my friends for your awesome support. Guys, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.